welcome to the show. You are watching EQ, and my name is No Equal. Chilling here backstage with the one and only Hero Bust. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am awesome. Now, what is normally running through your head right now? Because we are backstage. This man is minutes away from going on stage, and he's headlining here at Yost Theater in Orange County. So, what does that what does that feel like? Do you get nerves at all? Um, not not really. Um, surprisingly, it's not like the number of people that you play for hmm. that makes you nervous. It's who you play for. Okay. So, for example, if if there were five thousand, you know, fans at like a festival show out there right now, but I didn't know any of them, I'm not gonna be nervous. But if there's like two like good friends who are like 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 if like Loud Pack was out there and right. I know they're like watching my like transition, <laughs> that's 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 really when you want to be in your game for for them. Yeah. You know, because like yeah. Because they just, know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody knows what's going on, but it's like it's like a it's like an admiration and respect thing. Yeah. You know, you want yeah. Now, if you uh, when you guys are backstage, you know, with the other artists and stuff, do you guys kind of talk over your set and talk about how it went and all that? Like, do you get feedback? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's definitely um, there's definitely like criticism and you know, and, and actually like people kind of take dibs on tunes, uh, especially with trap when it was such a young genre. Yes. Like not so long ago, it just it just came out and there were like ten hot tunes. Right. So you would you would get on a bill with three other like trap guys and be like, all right, who's taking this? Who's taking that? So like there is there is a lot of that that goes on. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it was funny early on because there just weren't that many tunes. No, I, I, and I remember that because when trap first started, yeah, I original mean, dawn, original yeah. dawn, original dawn. <laughs> I mean, and then when twerk came out, it was bird machine, bird machine, yep. bird machine. And it's like, how do you fill up, you know, four to five hours of that when sure, everyone's within sure. the same but, genre? But you do, you do. You I find mean, a way. It's all good. There's <laughs> plenty to go around now. What is like your best story from being on tour, playing out and stuff? Um, like, like age appropriate? Like... <laughs> we don't have to stay age appropriate. <laughs> um... I don't know, I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. Let okay. Me, give me, let me think about it for a minute. Okay. Make sure everything's on the level. <laughs> now, now, now I want to hear like the first thought that came to your head. Post interview, post interview. You know? <laughs> okay, off camera we'll talk. Sure. You haven't been in the game that long, right? It's been like two years ish. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how? What happened within those two years? How did all this right, happen? All right. So, so I always produced, okay. like from age like twelve. Nice. I lived in Atlanta. Hip hop was the thing. I was making rap beats. Got into hip hop, like wow. like DJ Premier. Um, you know, Mad Lib, Dilla, all okay. that stuff, and I came up making beats. Um, actually, this is this is a good story. I'll tell you this story. So it was beat music. It was not it was not EDM per se. Right. It was like Flying Lotus, Sam I Am, like like that kind of stuff. I don't even know if you really know what that is. It's, it's... I was at Flying Lotus slash okay. Yoto actually, okay. and awesome. I know you actually got to play at Low End Theory with Flying That's Lotus. That's what I'm about really to tell you though. Oh yes. So so Sorry, spoiler. I am playing my first show out of state ever. Okay. In my life, and I hit up this dude Matthew David, who was like really influential to me. He had up uh, Leaving Records, super obscure, super creative, like awesome label. Check it out if you like weird stuff. Um, and and I was like, yo, I really want to play. I got this show in San Diego. Like, can you hook me up with a show in in, uh, in LA? He was like, yeah, you're gonna open for like this dubstep dude. Never heard of him. Whatever. It's like cool. Okay. I'm like, I'm probably gonna play for a scrub. Who cares? I'm a scrub. <laughs> yeah. You know, like let's let's do this shit. Yeah. So it's a I so I fly out there. And, uh, and I, I had not heard from them. I have no agent, no management. I had not heard from them in probably like a month and a half. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, you said it's gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen, right? So you, put your, you, you, you turn your phone off or put in airplane mode, whatever. You land and then you expect to get like a few text messages or like Facebook notifications, whatever. I get like 100 Facebook notifications like 50 texts, dude, what's going on? How are you on this bill with Flying Lotus? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking everyone, I'm thinking everyone's fucking with me. I think everyone is joking with me. Yeah. And so I, no one told me. Matthew David never told me, Daddy Kev never told me. I found out from a Facebook invite to a show that I was on. And it was me, DJ Nobody, <laughs> Gas Lamp Killer, Flying Lotus, wow. and to me, to me, like at the time doing the music that I was doing, like this was like, yeah. these were the dawns. Absolutely. This was like, this was the dream team. This was, this was everything. And it yeah. was like, it was like one of my first shows making like an impression on all those people. 
and it was nuts. I, I really thought it was a joke for the longest time. I got to the venue, there's a line wrapped around the building three times, and I, did, I didn't know how to get in. I hadn't played enough shows Excuse to know. Me. I hadn't played enough shows to know you. You find the back door or mm -hmm. whatever, or you show a laminate or whatever. I seriously just stood there with my shit, with my stuff. And I was just like, I don't know how to get in here. And luckily, I knew what Daddy Kev looked like. And when he walked in, I was like, Yo, I think I'm playing. He's like, What do you mean you think you're playing? I'm like, uh, Hero Bus. He's like, Come inside. That's and crazy. that was it. And that was like. That was it. Well, Matthew Davis, wherever you are Matthew now. David, Matthew, Matthew David. Matthew David, wherever you are Thank now. Thank you so much. <laughs> so then I know that you started out making more of down tempo type of beats and stuff yeah. like that. At what point did you switch over to trap and decide, okay, this is going to be my thing? Um, trap, to me, being from Atlanta, was mother's milk. But I was really closed-minded. I was like hip-hop or nothing. Everything else was like, you know, cookie cutter, like consumer product bullshit. And and as and as soon as I st I had never really seen it in the right in the right context. Yeah. You know, I'd seen beats in the right context because I had, I had smoked weed and watched Adult Swim and listened to beats like oh this is perfect. You know like you, you put dubstep on while you're right. smoking weed and watching Adult Swim. Right. No, it's not gonna work. It's obnoxious, <laughs> right? So so yeah, definitely you know fist pumping, watching Adult Swim, yeah. you know, bigger house, whatever. Um, but then when I once I started to play shows, I started to go to the clubs and I started to be exposed to all these genres in their element and I and I saw it uniting all these people in a really cool way and then it clicked and then it was like whoa like I wanna make I wanna make everything. I wanna make I wanna make house, I wanna make dubstep, I wanna make trap, I wanna make everything. And trap was really just the easiest for me to hop on because it kinda it kinda started to gain traction. I was like, I'm from Atlanta, I love right, this. Right. Not only do I love this but I know how to make it because I've been doing it for years. Um, so it You've just, been it making really, like the OG version, the right, hip hop version right, of it. Right, right. Trap yeah. before it was like it EDM trap. It was EDM trap, trap. yes. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those like trap purists. Like, I'm not gonna like stop you. I didn't know there were anything. trap purists, oh, but yeah. Oh, trust me, there are. Trust I know the type very are. well, trust. Yeah, ask heroes and villains about them. <laughs> we will, yeah. next interview after you. Of course. <laughs> this is, a Hero Bus told us to ask this question. <laughs> Daniel, now, Daniel is a historian ooh, of, okay. of Southern hip hop. Okay. I like he, his Twitter feed is like my hip hop news. Well, what do you see coming up for you, like in this next year? I know you talked about a lot of collabs that you have coming up. Can you tell yeah, us about that? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm um, doing a collab with an artist called Kaiwachi. Okay. Uh, Snails. We're, we're doing a house tune. Uh, we're doing nice. it right now. I'm pretty stoked on that. Um, Capella. He's from Russia. Can hardly speak English. Uh, but I love his music. Um, they're they're all like relatively smaller artists, and I and I think it's more fun. It's more fun for me to work with people just based on the music instead of, you know, like brand power yeah. or whatever. What's your next big release? Um, next big release. I mean, really, I'm just I'm just trying to. I don't even know. I don't even know. I've been touring for so long. Yeah. I just want to get home and like, and just and just make, just make as much music as I can and figure all that out later. I have like an EP's worth of tracks done now. Um, and uh, I'm really just wait, I'm waiting for that one. Like I have a bunch of like, a bunch of really interesting, really strange songs, but I'm waiting for that one that I feel like is going to speak, it's still gonna be strange, but is, is gonna be able to speak to a, a huge amount of people. Okay. And that will be the face of the next, you know, I don't know, eight months of Hero Bus. Wow. Okay. Um, You'll hit us up when that comes out, right? Of course. Okay, because I need to, now the stage is set oh, and well, I need to hear this track. Of course. Awesome. Of course. So when you are at home and chilling, home finally, outside the music, who is, who is Hero Bus? Who's hated? Um, really, really, I mean, music takes up like nearly all my time. Okay. I play basketball. Okay. I, I live on the beach. So I, live? Gotta, I live in Miami. Okay, so you moved from ATL then? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, just recently. Um, so I, I live on the beach, spend a lot of time out there, um, I like to swim, play basketball, eat tacos. Okay. That's uh, Living the South it. Beach life, I see it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, then hopefully we will see you uh, in, your, in your hood now, actually. Come through. For Absolutely. sure. Small Bridge Firepower at Mecca. It's going down. It's going to be epic. Look up that bill. Look up that bill. <laughs> I'm trying to do like the M, but I don't, does that work? Look the up M? that bill. Okay. <laughs> sure, that works. That works. That totally works. So we'll see you in Miami, hopefully soon. 
And y'all keep an eye out for this man right here because he's got some pretty epic stuff coming out. I'm excited to see it. And you're about to go hit the stage, so we're not going to keep you that much longer. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for your time, here. Internet. Absolutely. My name is No Equal, and of course, this is the man, Hero Bust. You are watching EQ inside EDM. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at youtube.com slash EQEDM. You can catch our other episodes on there as well if you haven't. Uh, check out our homies, Loud Pad, Victor Niglio, and up and coming episodes as well. We'll see y'all soon. Next up on EQ. No Equal here on the red carpet of the IDMAs with a legend who is in the building, BT, welcome. Thank you, it's nice to be here. One of the genres that we work very closely with um, is trap music. Oh cool. Uh, which a lot of EDM has, you know, mixed reviews about. How do you feel about trap music? I have an 808, so yeah, I can hang. BT runs the trap though. Yeah, but going way back, like the Dirty South stuff, yeah. you know, so yeah. <laughs> she knows she bad and she knows.